Hello, hello everyone. How are you doing today? Um, it's a pleasure to have you guys here. Uh, my name is Esther. I will be moderating today's session. Uh, here at ALX, I handle marketing and student recruitment. And today we are going to just take you through a session on the tech program. So if you are here, I know that you have either applied for data analytics, you have applied for Salesforce, for AWS front end or back end, and that's what we are going to cover today. Uh, joining me today is uh, Obam. This is the person who, when you join ALX, <laughs> this is the person who will be taking care of you, making sure that you know you are progressing through the program well. Um, and I'll just allow him to introduce himself. Hello, Esther. How are you doing? <laughs> I am doing fantastic today. Yeah, I'm so glad to be with you here. Hello, everyone. I can see so many people on the chat already. You know, this is so interesting. My name is Thomas Obam. I, I take care of the learners when they are, uh, they've joined ALX. I make sure you have a good time uh, when you're here. Yep. Over to you, Esther. All right, thank you so much, Obam. And then also on the chat, um, Lillian, who's from uh, Marketing and Comms, she will be helping moderate the chat. So if you see Lillian responding to like, uh, you know, like uh, um, your questions um, in the chat section, she will be the one like supporting us, supporting that. So don't worry, don't be like, eh, uyu ni nanya na tuambia sijini ni. Lillian also works. Um, in our team. But before we get started, I just want to get like a feel of where is everyone from. Uh, if you are from Nairobi, uh, just let us know if you are from Mombasa, from Kisumu, from Nyeri, uh, from Meru, um, from Marsabit, uh, I don't know where else. <laughs> I mean, whatever county you are from, just type in the chat where are you joining us from today. Um, Oh, fantastic. And actually, also, we have Diana as well, who will be also helping moderate the chat. Uh, Diana is also handles our student recruitment. If anyone of you has been to any of like our events in different universities, you've probably interacted with Diana. So Diana and Lillian will be helping you in the chat section. So I can see a lot of people are from Nairobi. I see Kisi, Kiambu, Nakuru. Hey, what we can do in Nairobi to the Nairobi Metropolitan. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Even me, I'm in Kambu, but I'm also in Nairobi. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I see, yeah, I see a lot of Nairobi and Kambu. Nairobi, Kambu is the Nairobi metropolitan area. Um, I see a bit of uh, Nyeri. I see Nakuru. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I see someone from Mombasa. I see someone from Eldoret. Hey, Mary, we are billboard yet. We call Eldoret. Did you come home? We are about to ambia poko chat. To ambia kama iko na George na zako Nairobi. To member billboard ilieko na tuju. Um, all right, Kajiado County, Matasia. Uh, good to meet you, Stephen. Okay, so it seems a lot of people are from Nairobi, Kiambu, and a few from other counties as well. So, right. So, before we get started on the Q&A today, uh, we are going to just play a small game. Uh, basically, I'm just going to ask you some questions. And then, usi Google, manze. Fikiria tu alafu type kwa chat. Yeah, don't be there to trying to Google so that you get the answer and whatnot. Um, yeah, so the first question is, um, you know, why was the computer called? Can someone just type, why was the computer called? The fastest responses, guys. Not just like we already have to share type pale chat GPT, share type kwa Google. Ata wa nyo type kwa Google, unafako share to ambia answer sai. Yeah, why was the computer called? Obam, what do you think? Uh, why, why was the computer called? Mm. Uh, because uh, it had just been called booted award. <laughs> You're also trying to think of like tech ish. Yeah, there's someone who's actually also saying like um, similar thing, it had a cold boot. Sadly, that's not the answer. The answer is not related to the boots. Uh, Victor, 
Victor CG kama you've Google because ume type two answer venyeiko. Answer venyeiko. CG ume copy paste. <laughs> I can see Hilaria saying it had so many windows open. Correct, correct, correct. The actual answer is it left its windows open and that's why it was called. Yeah, so I can see some people were trying, you know, Hey, Frederick, no, it wasn't off. So, say, I take you off quickly, <laughs> Um, all right, let me just go to the next question. Um, uh, so okay, then the next question is why did the computer break up with its keyboard? Why did the computer break up with its keyboard? Let me see, let me see who will. Answer quickly, quickly. Why did the computer break up with its keyboard? Let's see. Sipsty, as I wait for you. <laughs> I can be sure, say, when you want to take long, but you want to Google. But it's hard to. To have any answers up for chat. <laughs> No, no, it is not. Amos, it's not poor connection. Uh, someone else, someone else. Obama, maybe you can just try to guess this one as well. Uh, someone saying it had a mouse. No, 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 no. Therefore, is it tapping? No, no. Obama, what do you think? Um, actually, I wasn't thinking about anything. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, why did the computer break up with its keyboard? What? There was a love-hate relationship happening there or what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people love weird answers. It's too attached to the motherboard. It used that cheat codes. Hmm. James, you talk a robbery. You know, George Meskay, so a robbery is tricky. It was highly monitored. Um, let me show you guys the answer so that you don't spend so much time. It wanted a wireless relationship. Yeah, so the one who said wireless keyboard, you were almost, almost, almost there, but no, it broke up with its keyboard because it wanted a wireless relationship. <laughs> eh, Baraka and Asema, the keyboard wasn't its type. Someone else is saying it had daddy issues. Why would a computer have daddy issues? Godfrey, I would just elaborate in the chat. Why do you think this <laughs> this <laughs> this computer card keyboard issues? <laughs> hey, Felix and I might found someone with more keys. Eh? The answers today. Mm -mm. Then the next one, the last one now. Why do computers hate nature? So this one should be easy. This one should be easy. This one should be easy. Why do computers hate nature? Just type in the chat. No, 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 it didn't get frozen. Anyone, anyone, anyone? Hey, fast fingers, fast fingers. Hey, they die, no, 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 Brian. Anyone else, anyone else who has an idea? Obam, what are you thinking about here? Um, why do computers hate nature? By the way, these are these are very tricky questions. That's that's a way of telling you that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it what could that be? No, I I honestly don't have an idea. <laughs> Let me see the answers in chat. Some, Brian is saying nature is disorganized. Uh, Seth is saying they don't connect. It ha Duncan, it has many bugs. Nature is disorganized. Is nature really disorganized? I don't know. Uh, Victor is saying it has dust allergies. Eh? Hmm. Justin, uh, they prefer binary code. Eh, we may get technical. Um... Austin said because they produce makeups. I'm not sure, Austin, what you mean. Yeah, about Austin, just tell us in the chat uh, what you mean. But yeah, some there's someone who's gotten it correct. Um, I think that two people who talked about you know bugs. 
and it is true. Um, it's because nature has too many bugs, too many bugs. So that's why computers hate, hate, hate nature. Yeah, but you know, now <laughs> I hope that you know that has helped you, you know, Changamka Kidogo, so that you can get into what brought us here today. But thank you so much for participating as well. <laughs> I can see that the answers are still coming through. So I'm saying, Alex, that the computers don't have emotions. Nature has balance by default. Can you, laptops, computers don't have balance. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. So we are just going to get into, you know, what brought us here today. But um, let's just talk through, you know, who ALX is. I'm sure some of you have interacted with us. I'm sure some of you um, know who ALX is. So I'm just going to take you through like a short, 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 um, presentation about who ALX is and the programs that way we can be all on one page and then now we can start answering your questions so if you have any questions you can just type, it, type them in the chat Lillian and Diana will be supporting there and we will also get to answer them live but in the meantime the next let's say 15 minutes or so I'm going to just take you through who we are and what we do so at ALX, we believe that there's limitless op uh, potential of opportunity. Like you guys have so much, so much potential. Young people in Africa have so much potential. And so for us, we are sort of dedicated to helping you, um, you know, tap into that potential, especially like in the tech space. We are part of the Africa Leadership Group. Um, so if you've heard about Africa Leadership Academy, Africa Leadership University, and Sand Technologies, we are part of the same ecosystem. But really, like our big mission is to, um, you know, enable two million young uh, young professionals to secure dignified and meaningful work job opportunities by 2030. So if you are here, if you are keen on starting the program, then you will be part of that two million because it's not just about helping you get the skills, but also helping you get dignified and meaningful job opportunities. But now you may be wondering, you know, what makes ALX different? Um, you know, what makes us stand out? What do we do at ALX that's, you know, different? Or even just maybe are wondering, you know, why ALX and not another institution? So one of the things that we really pride ourselves in is the community aspect. Uh, when you join ALX, you get access to like Pan-African networks. I can assure you that regardless of the tech program that you are doing, you will be in a... Uh, you know, a project group with someone from Nigeria, from Egypt, from Morocco, from South Africa, uh, from Rwanda, and a lot of other like African countries. And why is that important? Because one, you get to have like very diverse perspectives in terms of just how you think about problems and solutions. Last week, I was talking to one of the guys who did software engineering at ALX and He's thinking about developing a solution in the logistics space. And he was saying how when he started thinking about this idea, uh, he did like, he was in a group with guys from like Senegal, um, Ivory Coast, and someone from South Africa. And when he was talking to them about some of the logistics issues that they experienced there, it's so easy to think that, you know, Africa as a large, we have the same logistics issues. But when he was thinking about develop, developing like a solution for Africa, he got to realize like different countries have so much like different perspectives and ways of doing things and even infrastructure. So that means that he started thinking about how do I tailor make, you know, my solution to work for different countries. And that's the kind of perspective you will get. And then you also get access to both in-person and online events. Um, so if you're in Nairobi, especially, you will get access to a lot of um, in-person events. But even if you're doing the program from another country, another county, you'll also get to experience a lot of like online programs. So and then as you as a learner, you get to experience learner community events. And once you graduate, we don't just leave you there. You get to experience fellowship events. Um, number two, our programs are rigorous. So, and you know, the idea is that, you know, when you get into the job market, you really have the technical skills. For all of us who've been through the 844 system, you know how the journey has been. And maybe you find that, you know, it's very exam focused rather than like you getting the actual technical skills. Key fact here is that 
20% of the work you do at ALX is project-based, 70%. 20% is peer work, which you do with groups, and then 10% is theory. So that means that you will be doing a lot of projects week on week, and it's to make sure that you get the technical skills. So that means that, you know, we say our motto is like, do hard things. You are actually coming to do hard things, and you'll get to experience that in the program. And then we add, you know, our secret sauce. You guys know that meme for, you know, the casserole thing. Um, I don't know what it was called, but, you know, that guy who drizzles salt. <laughs> so our secret sauce, <laughs> our secret sauce is like that. You know, it's like that cake, you know, that has already been baked and has a lot of foundation. I love, you know, all those nice toppings that you add that make the cake wholesome and make people like experience that cake well. That's our secret sauce. And the reason is, you know, we really believe in you just not getting like the technical skills, but also getting like the soft skills that you need to excel in the workplace, the soft skills and the professional skills. But you may be wondering what is in this secret sauce? Um, this is what we call like ALX foundations and meta skills. So regardless of also of the tech program that you will be doing, you will actually get to go through ALX foundations in the first two months. And you'll gain skills like critical thinking, quantitative reasoning, managing complex tasks, entrepreneurial thinking, communicating for impact, leading self and leading others, and also like tech skills. So now, why is it important to learn about leadership? One, you cannot lead others unless you learn how to lead yourself. But then again, leading leadership is very important to your growth. You won't stay in one position like forever. Even though you join entry level, at some point you're bound to grow and you know, exhibiting those leadership skills and other things like critical thinking and communicating well, those are the things that really help you grow in the workplace. And so, you know, when I was saying now this cake and the toppings and whatnot, we want to make sure that, you know, when you come out of ALX, you're well-rounded, you're fully baked in terms of like having all the skills the technical skills which you do, need to do your work and also like the professional skills that you need to excel at the workplace. And then also one of the things that for those who are in Nairobi will experience is you will get access to world-class infrastructure where you know you can come to our three hubs. Um, so we have a Harvard Nation Center, one at Gateway Park on Mombasa Road and one at CPA Center. They're normally open Sunday to Sunday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, and so that means that, you know, this is a space where you can come work from, access internet, electricity, you know, when, you know, power uh, is not available or maybe don't have internet at home, but even just collaborate with your peers. And also these are the spaces where we do in-person events. So those are the, like, the major skill things that, you know, all of you will get to experience at ALX. But, you know, what are the programs that you are offering right now in tech? So for all of you, maybe just type in the chat, um, which program have you applied for? I kind of just want to get a sense of um, which program have you applied for or which program were you interested in? Um, and for those who are sharing their questions, I am seeing all the questions and we will get to them. So worry not, we will actually get to um, answer the questions, but I just want to see in the chat, which program have you applied for? Uh, you know, in this list or which program are you interested in? Yeah. Um, okay, I can see Alvin saying software engineering. So Alvin, are you interested in front end or back end? Maybe it will be good to differentiate both because both are different programs. I can see cloud computing, a lot of data analytics, back end, front end. I can see Salesforce as well. Um, for those guys who've mentioned software engineering and also full stack, uh, maybe it's a good point to let you know that, you know, our software engineering program that we had before, that was one year and it was full stack, it was broken down into two different programs, which is front end and back end. So you can either do front end web development or back end. So currently we are not offering like full stack um Yes, or like the software engineering program that we had before. Uh, and you know, that program was very rigorous, 70 hours a week. But right now, even the commitment for these other programs has reduced like 40 hours a week. But yeah. Um, Amos Toet, I see web design. So I don't know whether you are keen on like back end web developments. Um, yeah, but I can see 
good to see like uh, the programs that you're interested in. I think we are all, almost all of us um, are on the same page. Um, and so let me just dig into, I will just highlight these programs. I won't get into the, like the technical bits uh, because um, on our website, we actually have the, um, the course curriculum. So if you want to really see like the technical aspects um, of these programs, we have like our course curriculums on our website. So right now I'll just highlight so that all of you, we are all on the same page in terms of like the difference between the tech programs that we are offering. So one, we have data analytics. And here the idea is that you'll be taught things like a data scientist, work with complex like data sets, um, and you'll be easily able to like analyze, manipulate and explore data, create dashboards, learn about Power BI and all. So these are like the four key modules that you will cover. So there's introduction to data, um, there's how to prepare data, querying data and learning how to visualize data. And throughout the program, you'll get to learn like a couple of different tools. Um, data analytics is offered in partnership with Explore AI. And when you finish the program, you do get like a certificate that shows ALX in partnership with Explore AI. Um, and then, um, so that's about data analytics. And then we have front end web development. So front end web development more, more or less like focuses of like the visual and interactive elements of like websites or web applications. Basically, users of web apps and mobile phones, whatever, let's say like if I go to an app, let's say on Instagram, whatever I see um, on that app or whatever I see when I land on that website or interact with, that's more or less like front end web development. And, you know, um, you know, it's like, um, how do I put it? Um, trying to think of the word, but, um, you know, you really get to, inter you know, like create like the visual elements, um, the user experience and whatnot like that, um, you know, like users will be experiencing. <clears throat> what to expect? So if you are, you know, thinking about, you know, what are like some of the languages that I will learn or aspects that I will learn, I've put them um, on screen like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React. You'll also learn about UI design because again, the user experience is very different. Uh, sorry, it's very important. But one of the things that you will do towards the end of the program is what we call the capstone project. The capstone project is where, you know, all the skills that you have been learning so far, um, you sort of get to now use them to like uh, develop like a project that you're interested in, kind of like to validate that, you know, you have learned, you have grasped the technical skills and you actually get to present this project um, to like our technical mentors and it's part of your evaluation. So that's what to expect um, in the front end web development program. And then um, the next, <clears throat> sorry, the next program is back end web development. So as I said, front end, it's really like whatever us as users we get to interact with, whatever we see on the website when we land there or on an app. But on the back end as well, now it's like building and maintaining like the server side of the web applications. So uh, this is very different from front end. I mean, you can choose to do like both programs or specialize in both, uh, sorry, or specialize in one. Um, and you know, the back end developers are really like at the core of like the functionality of these applications and whatnot. Um, so you can either choose. So for those guys who are interested in software engineering, you can either choose front end or back end. And whatever you learn in back end is also different because you know this is what you get to learn about uh, you know, Python programming, command line basics, uh, databases, web frameworks, AP, APIs as well. Um, uh, how to build like a Django app and again a capstone project where at the end of the program you'll also get to do um, you know a project that kind of like summarizes all the skills that you have been learning so that's back end and then we have AWS so I saw like a few people who are interested in AWS cloud computing and you may be wondering um, you know AWS normally has so many certifications but what certifications are you getting exactly from this program. So you'll get two certificates. One, it's the cloud practitioner, which is really like a foundational um, AWS certificate. And then you'll get a solutions <coughs> architect uh, certificate as well. So this program is offered in partnership with AWS. ALX is actually an AWS Academy member institution. So that means that this course, the course curriculum comes directly from AWS. One of the things to note is that, you know, 
as you do this program, you know, there are normally um, exams for the cloud practitioner uh, aspect and also so solutions architect. And as part of the package, you'll actually get vouchers to do this, um, to do these exams. We normally give you vouchers to, for the first try of the exam and also like for, for a retake. So if you're wondering, you know, what will I work away with when I do AWS cloud computing? You will walk away with two certifications, which is cloud practitioner and solutions architect. And then there's the Salesforce guys. Um, you're wondering, you know, what is Salesforce? Uh, what are we doing? So Salesforce is a CRM um, and a CRM that is used in different sort of uh, business processes, whether it's like, you know, in B2B businesses to like track down sales, um, um, also in uh, some B2C businesses as well. It's very multifaceted and different companies use Salesforce for different uh, purposes, but at the core of it, it's a CRM. So when you become a Salesforce administrator, you will learn how... <clears throat> Um, you know, you learn, like basically you're preparing for a career in the Salesforce ecosystem, um, you know, where you will be the one sort of helping companies to let's say build like their Salesforce platform um, and, you know, build out like their Salesforce processes depending on the needs that, you know, that company has. So, um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, and the commitment for Salesforce is also 30 hours a week. And even for the other programs, it's more or less like 30 to 40 hours a week, um, or even maybe in some cases, 50 hours a week, but it doesn't exceed that. So this is more about like, you know, just Salesforce. And also one of the things to note is that if you have applied for Salesforce, you will also do a Salesforce administrator exam and of, of which, uh, you know, part of the packages that you will give you like the vouchers to do um, that exam. So those are like the, the five programs that we are offering. Uh, this was just like a rough overview about the programs, uh, not getting into like the very technical side, but as I mentioned, we have like all the course curriculums on our website. So as I mentioned, so that is data analytics, AWS cloud computing, Salesforce administrator, front end web development and back end web development. Um, yeah, and you know, I know some of you have already started the application process. I know some of you are further along, but just so that you know, everyone is well aware of the application process, um, the, uh, the eligibility requirements. I've seen some questions about you know age um, <clears throat> in the chat section. So you need to be between 18 and 34 years old, and you know, you may be wondering why. This is because of our partnership. Uh, you know, with MasterCard Foundation, where, you know, for them, they define youth as those who are between 18 and 34. And so we are mandated to sort of provide these programs and opportunities to people who are between 18 and 34. And that's why the age limits, you need to be of African origin. So you can, you could be staying in a different country, but you can still do the program if you're of African origin. So that part for country of origin, if you put any African country, it's fine and then access to a laptop and internet. But as I mentioned, for those in Nairobi, if you, let's say you don't have like access to, you know, internet, you can always come and study from the hubs that we have at Nation Center, at CPA Center, or, or at Gateway Park on Mombasa Road. Um, so how to apply, you either go to our website or you go to our landing page. All of them have the same domain, alxafrica.com. You will see like the list of programs there. And then it will take you to this um, admissions portal where you create an account. And you know, once you create an account, then you can log back in and start your application process. There's a three-step application process. And it's important to, you know, to talk about this so that you know like what's expected of you in the application process, where one, you create an account and you need to confirm your account on email. And then to the application process where there are three assessments, English proficiency, logical reasoning, and numerical assessment. Uh, they differ very slightly per program, but it's almost entirely the same. There's an essay question, an ALX challenge that you write about, and a sponsorship essay question. So the sponsorship essay question, to just make it clear, is that the cost that you are paying for these programs, you are paying the admin, you are paying the administration fees, you are not paying the program fees. Our program fees actually range from 7,500 US dollars to 10,000 US dollars. 
that has been waived because of our partnership with MasterCard or rather like MasterCard Foundation gets to cover that. So what you pay for is the um, administration fee. So basically in the sponsorship question, essay question, you're answering why should the program fees be covered for you? So you are paying the admin fees and then now that additional cost for the program fees, that's why you're sort of validating why should you, you know, have the rest of, let's say, like the $7,500 covered for you. And then once you finish this application, you will be notified whether you've been accepted or not. Um, if you've been accepted, then you'll be told about the next process, which is enrollment. Um, so enrollment means payment. Enrollment equals to payment here um, for the tech programs where you'll have to pay the administration fee. And, you know, you can either pay, we have different um, installments. So you can either pay the fee, um, you know, so at the top, you can see like um, that's the fees for the programs. So this data science in the um, towards the last uh, column and someone has asked, you know, why aren't we mentioning data science? It's because we only offer one data science cohort per year and we already finished applications for data science already. Um, so it will only be offered again next year. So that means that the programs currently available are AWS, front end and back end. So AWS is $150, front end and back end is $200, Salesforce is $175, and Data Analytics is $150. If you choose to pay the full payment at the point where you're enrolling for the program, you will get a 20% discount. And then you can choose, you know, maybe instead of paying full payment, you'll pay two installments. So installment one will be due um, before the deadline of the application. That is, that is on May 21st. And then the second installment, will be due um, two months after you start the program. So as I mentioned, you do ALX foundations for two months, then you go ahead to do like your tech program. So at the point where you're transitioning from ALX foundations to your tech program, that's where you pay the second installment, or you could not choose to, you know, uh, pay, um, you know, a monthly fee instead, you know, of let's say like the one off and why not, and then you pay uh, this monthly fee. Another question that comes here is, um, why is the amount in dollars? The amount is in dollars because we try to standardize the amount across all African countries. As I mentioned, like, you know, we are Pan-African, so we are offering this program in all the, I don't know, it's 55 countries so far, um, you know, in Africa. So that means that it's important, you know, we try to standardize the cost. And then the, the exchange rate will be dependent on the day that you're paying. So if you pay today, you will pay with the exchange rate today. If you pay tomorrow, you will pay with the exchange rate tomorrow. Um, and actually, I just see yeah, another question from Dennis coming in that when should we begin paying? You can pay, um, you can pay even right now before the deadline. So the first installment, even if you're paying monthly, is due before the deadline on May 21st. So whether you're paying full amount, whether you're paying two times installment, whether you're paying monthly, the first installment is due um, May 21st, which takes me to what are some of the communications you will get? So when you apply, there's that welcome email uh, that you get within 24 hours, just telling you to sort of confirm your email address when you create an account on the portal. And then this is what you see when you finish the application process. Let's say like for Rita, you know, she was applying for AWS Cloud Computing. On the portal, it will show, you know, congratulations for submitting. You've been accepted into the program. And then it will ask you, you know, to go ahead and make payment. And then you can choose any of the options um, above. So as of now, if you choose one payment option, you cannot change it down the line. Um, that's as of now. I know it's being worked on, but uh, there are some people who are like, uh, if I start paying monthly, then maybe I get... Uh, some ca some more cash later can I switch to you know paying the full amount after and whatnot you know so the the option that you choose here is the option that you know you will use uh you know all through um so I mentioned key dates application deadline is 21st May and that's also the same date for the enrollment deadline and enrollment here means payment so that means that whatever installment if it's the monthly one you need to pay the first monthly installment before 21st. If it's the 
two times installments, then you need to pay the first one as well before 21st. And if you pay, you are paying for the full amount last year, um, again, 21st May, and then all of you will start the program on 3rd June. So I think between 21st and 3rd June, it's only a period of two weeks. So that means that, you know, pay before 21st and then after you will you will get like emails from our onboarding team on how to be onboarded to like the different like learning platforms and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so I think I will get onto the questions. Um, I will just add Obam here on stage to help with some of the questions. So um, I'm just going to scroll um, up to some of the questions that were asked earlier. Um, so Obam, I don't know whether you can answer this, but there was like a question around, um, you know, whether ALX has ever tried to approach coding as Andela was doing. So I don't know whether you might have like a bit of a background. Um, sorry, the question is if ALX has, has approached coding the way Andela uh, Ah, has ALX ever tried to approach coding as Andela was doing? Now, ALX and Andela are uh, a, a bit different. Um, actually, each had developed their own internal uh, systems that actually verify valid validity of code. So it's not it's not the same. But the approach we are using and the approach Andela was using is different. Um, all right. Okay. Um, then there's a question from Seth. Um, I, I started my software engineering earlier, but deferred and on resuming my account, it seemed terminated. Is there a way I can get back and finish? Um, Obam? Um, no. The, the idea is that uh, for software engineering, it will be very, very hard for you to come back because I am guessing here that you deferred uh, an online cohort because the first online, the first hybrid cohort of software engineering we had it last year in May, and we already have the last cohort of uh, software engineering, which was cohort twenty two, I think. So we have closed that chapter. It will be very hard. You cannot really reapply to go for the online software engineering program. You can see now where we divided the software engineering into two, the front end, front end and back end. Uh, yeah, so if you deferred and you are doing uh, the the online program, no, you, you it's you you'd have to reapply for either the front end or the back end. Um, all right, thank you for that response. And you know, Seth, if you need even more clarity, um, I can see that Lillian put the link for our customer support team. Um, you know, and they can be able to, uh, uh, you know, trace like the exact timelines where you deferred and also give, you know, give you like more feedback. But as Obama said, we've shifted gears a bit when it comes to the programs. Um, then there was a question from Wango Is there an age limit from this program? Yes. Um, it's between 18 and 34. So for you to apply for the program, you have to be between 18 and 34 years at the point of which you apply. So if you're applying and maybe you are 34, um, that's fine. Uh, but if you've turned 35, that might be a bit hard. So yes, 18 to 34. Um, then Obam, this next one is for you. And maybe I think at this particular point, uh, I can see some, He's asking, you know, whether they are recording classes to like download and watch again. Maybe you can just give a bit more clarity in terms of, you know, the learning model at ALX. Okay, great. So uh, you've already more or less um, gave them, you know, bits and pieces of it of how it's done. You know, introducing them to the secret source and all that. So what happens is that whether you've taken the AWS data analytics front end, uh, back end, or Salesforce, the first two months of the program, you go through the ALX foundations. And in ALX foundations, you're going to not just be theoretically talking about um, the meta skills that were being spoken about, communication, 
uh, project management, critical thinking, leadership, all that. It will be very practical as well, because uh, you know when you're talking about leadership skills, leading self, leading others. In leading self, when you're being taught self awareness, for example, we introduce you to the daily three, uh, which is uh, movement, meditation, and uh, morning pages. How to just be super self aware and you know not just do things. Uh, you know, out of nowhere, really. Then after that two months, there'll be a break. Then when you come back uh, after the break, then you will now start your tech specialization. Normally, we, um, we, we more or less allow learners who want to, you know, initially from the beginning of the program, you are like, you know what, I need to do data analytics, but then you decide okay maybe i think i need to do aws we normally allow people to jump ship uh, there's a small window there that you can jump ship and do a, another program then uh, the different programs you saw so the length of them then you will go through the whole program and then once you're done with the program for those who are taking uh, Salesforce administration and AWS, you are told that you know you're meant to do an exam because the body that examines you is uh, an external body. So for AWS and for Salesforce, you'll either go to a Pearson View Center or a Criterion Center, or if you can meet the conditions of doing the exam at your uh, online from your own house, then why why not? You can actually do the exam from your house, but you will give you a small window to prepare for the exam. Uh, you know, if you need to study more and then you apply for the voucher, and then we give you the voucher. The voucher, you can only redeem it once. So you better be super ready and prepared for that examination. So that's for the, the guys who are doing uh, from, uh, Salesforce and AWS. Now for the guys who are doing data analytics the front end and back end you're so lucky because we have developed our own systems uh that help us when it comes to grading and uh more or less making sure that you get to enjoy uh, great content so for you your certification will be by alx um, literally yeah, and then uh, the other thing you have to understand is that during your learning, we will try and scaffold your experiences with uh, in-person events uh, and all that to just make sure that you know we build community and you guys come to the hub and have a good time there and all that. Now, when it comes to the content, uh, you'll be there are a couple of tools that you more or less need to be familiar with or be very you know, comfortable using. The first is, uh, I had somebody talking about are there recorded classes. We normally, the course, the program is fully online. Uh, so that means that all the content is online, but we normally have office hours. You know, if you're having problems and or there is a technical issue that uh, you want addressed, different programs have different office hours where the, those pro problems um, are addressed. So you need to be able to use YouTube, for example. Then you need to be able to access your browser because the learning, it's called LMS, the learning management uh, software, the system we use is, uh, is called Savannah. So with Savannah, for you to access Savannah, you, you'll be given more or less credentials to access the the portal the portal is where you get to access your learning tab your community tab so it's more or less like a dashboard where to connect to your community you're told that this community is pan-african you'll get to meet people from nigeria they're on the community tab it's just like a facebook of sorts where you get to meet all these people people who are doing data analytics or cloud and are from different countries and you get to enjoy their interests and share you know why you're doing this program and they get to share that's on the community portal then on the learning portal that's where you get the savannah which is the um, lms which is the learning management system now uh, 
what happens is that you'll be able to do foundations in specialization. So remember, the meta skills that you're doing will still continue, bits and pieces of them. For the first two months, our program, the content is not self-paced, more or less, that you know when you get time is when you do it. We open content on Monday, and it's the deadline for your submission is on uh, Sunday midnight GMT, which is Monday uh, 3 a.m. Kenyan time, East African time. So that means that you, you have two things that you're meant to submit, a test and a milestone. So you had Esther speaking about that 70% of the workload is project-based. So that means that, that part of that project is the milestones that you get to submit. Um, and then you get to submit the test. So those ones are open. Remember, the content is opened on Monday and by Sunday it's locked. So you need to have finished the content within that period. The reason why most people find it very hard to do the ALX programs is that they wait till the end of the week. You know, content is gonna be closed on Sunday, it's Friday. Okay, let me try out something, you know. But that's not the best way to do it. You just need to ensure that you take a little bit of your time every single day. And uh, with that, you find that, okay, even if you took an hour out of your schedule every day to go through the content, by the time it's coming, I, I've seen people who, you know, they've gone through all their work content by Friday and they have, you know, submitted their tests, submitted their milestone. It's really, really good. Yeah, so that is really how the learning will be taking place. Esther, over to you. Um, all right, uh, thank you, Obam, for that. Um, I think people now have like a bit of a background in terms of like how we offer our programs. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go to the, there's a question on the, pro, um, and I can't find it, but there's a question on, you know, how friendly are, the programs if you don't have like an IT or tech background. Okay, great. So that, uh, most of our programs have actually put that into consideration. In fact, for those who are doing AWS, it, it, it was even there on the screen when Esther was presenting that uh, the AWS cloud practitioner, for example, the certification is designed tailored for those who have no clue, have never been techies whatsoever. And the same applies to all the other programs because we start from the very basics. What you need is you need just the passion to learn. You need to be somebody who really, really wants to learn. That's it. Uh, there is nothing much. Uh, you don't need that. That's why during your application process, we don't ask you to you know, submit a degree in, in computer science or submit uh, that you got an A in computer studies in high school. D nothing. We don't ask you for any background in tech. We just like you know what, you're longing to learn. We got you. We'll get. We'll give you the best. Um. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um. So we'll go to the next one. Um. Let me see. I think I can address this one. Uh, how can I change from to? back end or front end because i applied on full stack but trying to change the response was that i can't yeah um so so salmon i don't know how you applied for full stack was it that you applied for full stack like a long time ago then you deferred you stopped the process and then now you're applying for front end or back end so i don't know whether you're still doing the full stack one because if you're doing the full stack one like the one that you know we used to have the software engineering one then you don't need to now do back end or front end because both of those contents are covered in the full stack one. But maybe if you stopped for if you stop doing the full stack one at some point and then right now you're trying to come back to either like back end or front end, just apply the best answer is just apply with a different email address than the one you used for um the software engineering program. Reason being like in our system, you can see based on you know your email is like your ID. So that means if you discontinued and whatnot, um, sometimes it can be a bit hard to kind of like 
use the same email address and shift it to a different program. So the best answer for you is just apply using a different email address than the one that used for software engineering. But if you are still continuing with the software engineering program, then there's no need to do front end or back end. But you know, maybe there are certain needs that you have and you can talk to some of the technical mentors that you have in your cohort so that you can get maybe more clarity. Um, then there's a question from Elizabeth as well. So um, I think Elizabeth, it depends at the point of which you're doing the AI career. So I assume the AI sessions, you mean AI career, career essentials. So if you are doing them before the tech program starts, I mean, I think that should be fine because sometimes, you know, the programs are really rigorous. So doing the two programs at a time usually like just guarantees, you know, failure or slowing down in one of the programs where you're not able to handle both. So when we advise you not to take two programs at the same time, it's really coming from that point where if you are doing two programs at the same time, there's one, there's one that's bound to lag behind and maybe you might not, you know, end up making the most out of it that, you know, than you would have. So that's why I advise you to do different programs uh, instead of two programs at the same time. However, I can see that you said you have time, but um, the commitment is actually, yeah. So just telling you from like, you know, an insider information that the commitments in terms of time for both because even for AI career essentials, as much as you say 20 to 30 hours a week, um, for most students, it's actually leaning more towards the 30 hours a week than the 20. So if you get any 20 hours, it's leaning more towards the 30 hours a week. But yeah, so maybe just do one, then do the other. But then again, if, you know, based on, because I think I didn't get clarity in terms of when you started the AI career essentials compared to when the data analytics one is starting, Again, you can just use a different email address if they are do happening at different seasons. Yeah. Um, then there's a question on. So there's a question from Saitoti in terms of where is everyone applying for the programs? So I'm actually just going to um, show you the application process so that maybe it's clear. Just going to share my screen. Um, so what happens is, let's say you'll go to our website or you'll go to our landing page, and this is what it will show. This is the landing page here. Um, maybe Lillian or Diana, you can just put this link um, in the chat section so that everyone is well aware. And then once you scroll down, you'll see all the programs. So there's the AI Career Essentials one, um, you know, um that is free and then we have the other tech program so you can just come and see you know aws data analytics backend frontend and salesforce so now you, if you choose you know aws you'll just click learn more um come and see more information about aws when i was mentioning that you know our course curriculums are also available uh you know they're linked here in the curriculum section here, um, you where you'll be able to download the syllabus, and once you realize that once you and even the fee is included there as well, um, you know, once you decide this is the program that you want to do, then you click apply now. It will open like a different page, which is the admissions portal, and then you will come and create um, an account here. So put your first name, last name, email, whatever, or you can create an uh, your account with either like your Google account or your GitHub account. And then now that is when now you'll continue with, uh, you know, like the three-step application process where I mentioned, um, you know, uh, so once you create an account, you go through the application process that takes around 45 minutes and then enrollment, which um, is payment. So Saitoti, I hope that is clear. So the link will be available in the chat. And also the same link is available on alxafrica.com. The application process is the same for every African, regardless of the country that you are coming from. Um, then, um, so Denzel was asking whether they can change the program uh, after registration. Yes, at the point where you're switching. So when you do the ALX uh, foundations, 
um, after two months, there's normally a, a window where you can switch the programs and the team will guide you um, accordingly. Um, then maybe Obama, you can just speak to this question from Richmond. Um, and so I've realized that your programs require 20 to 30 learning hours. How achievable is this for an 8 to 5 p.m. person who is willing to move into tech while at the same time working all along? Would you recommend the move or does one need to quit their place of work to join ALX? Obam? Okay, good. That's a great question, uh, Richmond, um, that somebody's working 8 to 5 p.m. and they still want to do ALX. Remember that the reason why you're joining ALX matters a lot. In fact, when we are onboarding our learners, the, when we have a Karibu ceremony to welcome them, one of the things we have is, you know, we get to share light. And that is really what it means that I am joining. Why are you joining uh, the program? For example, you, you want to do data analytics or AWS. Why do you want to do it? Because then once you have a reason behind it, then that reason can beat any, you know. In fact, I remember, I don't know how many of you read this book uh, by Viktor Frankl. Uh, what's, what's the name of the book? Ma, ma, Man Search for Meaning. And they say that if, if you uh, have a why, you can bear any what. So if you have a reason why you're actually doing the program, you have how many hours a day? You have 24 hours, eight to five. That's uh, how many hours are those you're working? Those are nine hours, I think. Uh, how many more hours do you have in between? Then you, it's just a matter of planning yourself because what you need to do is just get a little bit of time every day. You see, the problem is that uh, as human beings, we normally have moods that keep changing up and about. You know, today I feel like studying, then I study. Tomorrow I don't feel like studying, then I don't. No, if you fix a time, you're like, okay, every single day once I get home, I shower or wind down from work, I spend an hour studying, and then I go, I, I do my other things. Or I wake up an hour earlier to do just one hour of studies, and then I, I prepare myself to go to work. You can always find ways of, uh, you know, maneuvering through it. But what you have to do is you have to be consistent. You can't study when you feel like it's an obligation and then you have to because you have a reason why you started the program. So I wouldn't advise you to quit your work if at all you know that's what wins your bread so that you do the program because, yeah, I mean, when you're doing the program, maybe when you want to come to the hub, you need some uh, bus fare. How are you going to get that? Uh, or you need to some money for your upkeep. But I mean, if you have somebody, but I wouldn't advise you to quit your work. Remember that you're doing this program to more or less upskill. You have a certain skill or you're, you're trying to look for a certain other skill that can help you build on another thing. You're not just doing it for the fun of it, right? So if you're serious that, you know what, I'm going to use this program to help me build on to the next level, then you'll get time. And if you get time, you better be consistent to that time. And then with that, you, you'll finish the, the, the program and actually graduate. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Obam. Um, so the next question from Ellie. I'm an IFAC scholar. Have they communicated around my application? Um, I don't know which program you have applied for, but um, I would say if you're being sponsored by IFAC, um, just check in with them first. Uh, but then again, you need to have gone through the application process, finish the application process, and then now at the point of payment, let them know um, about it, and then they will be able to assist. Uh, there's a question from Faith. Are your certificates recognized in case one needs to use it for job applications? Um, Obam? Yes. So, Faith, yes, they are. So what happens is that we've tried, obviously, we'll give you a... Uh, we would have loved as much as possible to print certificates and have them delivered to you. But that's not what we do. We give you a soft copy of the certificate. But that soft copy, 
has actually a QR code that anyone ha who wants to verify the um, validity of that certificate can actually do that. They can scan the QR code and find uh, we, it, it will show them once you go to it, it takes you to a landing page that shows that actually, you know what, Faith Bibe did uh, this program and actually completed blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, they are, uh, they can be validated. Mm, and the, the idea of uh, recognition is normally just, you know, uh, that there are people who have gone through your program or there are people who have actually done the program and they have the skills. That's really what recognition is. And uh, I can assure you, we have lots and lots of our learners out there who are doing great things. And there are people who, I mean, most of the uh, people who hire our clients, they come back and say, oh, guys, there's something that you're doing here which is very, very different. So yeah, that gives it a lot of uh, recognition, validation, and, 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 and all that. But it's true, yes. You can also use it for your job application without a problem because it's true. You need the program. We don't know what a certificate, if you haven't completed the program, we don't give it to you. Um, okay, um, I hope that answers you, Faith. Um, then to Kelly, um, yes, you can just maybe speak into these questions ab about this question about data analytics. So the question is, is the data analytics class exam based? If yes, it project based or essay based? So especially for the data analytics program, we were doing this for data science and data analytics. When you start, just start the program, we actually introduce you to a project. It's called the Majindogo project, which you, you will try and use, you know, the data that you collect. You'll try and visualize this data. You'll basically follow the data journey into solving this problem. Uh, so that's the project. But then uh, when you talk about exam here, I don't understand exactly what you mean, because for us, for the data analytics program especially, the most important thing that you need to do is the test. The test that is uh, due weekly, and that test you have to score at least 75%. So that means that you need to have done the, the content before the end of the week so that you know what, if you fail the test, you can actually redo it. You can, you can redo it uh, uh, until you get 75%. But you remember that, you know, we are allowing you to redo it so that, you know, you actually understand what you're doing, not just copying an answer and saying, yeah, yeah. The, the, the MCQs, they're multiple choice questions. And also for your milestone, you have to uh, submit the milestone. So those are basically, for data analytics, back end and software uh, and, and front end, you don't have like a definitive exam that awards you the certificate like Salesforce and AWS have. But for Salesforce, you have to uh, pass the both exams, the associate exam and the administration the administrator exam. For AWS is the same. You have to pass the cloud practitioner and the solutions architect. And you know these are certificates that are awarded by external bodies. So if you want to you know be an AWS whatever it is or a cloud, and they are giving you given that. But for data analytics of this uh, back end and front end. We do it internally, and we don't have one exam that determines all that. It's going to be determined with every other test and milestone you've ever submitted during the whole program. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, then there's a question from Godfrey. Is there a job up placement program for those who complete the programs, especially for data analytics? So, Godfrey, we don't guarantee job opportunities. What we guarantees that you will get the skills and you'll get as much support as needed because once you finish the program and you graduate you get to join alx fellowship alx fellowship continues to give you more support in terms of you know a master classes on things like cv writing interviewing um you know how to network um and things like that so that's what fellowship offers and all those things go into helping you in your job application process or in your um, CV writing process, and if you're already working, there are also like master classes and sessions on how to continue growing in the workplace. 
So as ALX, we don't guarantee you job opportunities. Yes, there are some few people who we connect to opportunities here and there, but then it's not a guarantee that let's say everyone who goes through data analytics uh we get a job through alx so you know you will and you know one of the statistics that you've learned is that like 80 percent of our students actually get jobs on their own after doing their program within six months of the of graduating so you will get like a lot of like a, a support materials resources and it's up to you to make most of those um you know resources so that you're able to secure like job placements um, um then there's a uh, Beatrice, there's a question on I applied for Salesforce and passed, but I got late in my payments. Can I still be accepted? So I'm assuming you mean that you applied for like the previous cohort, and by the time the deadline was getting to you hadn't made your payments. Yes, you can still go ahead and make your payments if you had still like if you had made your application process before so just log on to the portal um it should be showing you the same status for now you know you had already finished the process so it should be showing you the status for enrollment and once you know you pay it will actually reflect uh in terms of like this current cohort and if you experience issues with payments there's normally like a link to submit a ticket to the customer support team which lillian will put in the chat so it's, if you experience an issue or you maybe like maybe it's taking a bit of time to load or reflect, you can just reach out to the customer support team and they will be able to assist. But yes, you can still join this current um, cohort. Um, there was a question from Ian. Uh, was there a point where the software engineering course by ALX was completely free? Yes, there was a point in time uh one day <laughs> and there's a point where it was completely free but then one of the things we realized is that a lot of people were taking advantage of it and starting and dropping off because you know when you haven't committed any amount to you know doing like a certain program it's easy for it to drop off and especially because the software engineering program is hard 70 hours a week like those guys are doing the program they've been committing 70 hours a week are doing the program and so there's a point where it was free but then um yeah we introduced the administration fee because it was important to us that you know uh you know young people see like the value of these programs and really like commit we actually call the administration fee a commitment fee because when you are able to commit something then you really think twice about dropping out of the blue about like deferring especially when you're not experiencing like you know a serious like you know issue health issue and whatnot so yes there was a point in time but not anymore the only program that's free right now is the ai career essentials one that takes six weeks but the rest of the tech programs data analytics aws cloud uh, cloud computing salesforce front end and back end you do need to pay the administration fee but the good news is, you know, there are flexible payment options, whether you pay monthly, whether you pay the two, um, you know, the two installments, I think it gives you like that flexibility to be able to like afford making the payments. Um, then there's a question from Faith, are there additional charges after enrollment in the program charges for the exam costs? No. So if you are doing AWS, once you pay the administration fee, that's it you will get the vouchers to do like the AWS exams. You won't incur an additional cost. One of the things I know is that these certification exams are actually quite pricey, but those are also included as part of the package. So there won't be like additional costs unless now you do it and then you fail. And that's why Obama said there's, there's like a period where you have to, you know, you're given like time to prepare for the program so that, you know, you make the best use of that voucher um then there's uh there's a question for beach from beatrice do we have a contact person someone i can actually call unfortunately no um and the reason for this let's just imagine this scenario where we are offering this program to at every in every current you know season we normally have like 30 50 000 students across africa so can you imagine now having a call center 
um, for all those students in Africa would we'll literally need to have a center in every country and whatnot. Like it's, it will be a logistical nightmare. But then what we've done to simplify the process is we have two channels. One, we have our ALX GPT called Lea. Um, and you know, you can talk to Lea, you know, for most of like the general questions and it will, Lea will assist you. Uh, Lillian, maybe you can just uh, put the link for Lea. Um, Lea is a learning experience um, assistant, uh, which is AI based. Um, so once you get that link, rather than clicking on it, just copy paste it. When you copy paste it, it will open. When you just click it from the chat, um, it will show you like for phone not found. So just copy paste the link to like a different browser. And then if now your question is more technical, we have our support team. Um, and I think Lilian had also put the, the link. I'm just trying to find it. So... Uh, this is the link for Lea, which is actually on screen. And then he, this is the link for our customer support team. So if you have like a technical request, technical issue that you're experiencing, you normally just submit it through like the cast to the cast, uh, submit it as a ticket to the customer support team, and they will be able to handle the task accordingly. Whether you know their issues, you know, maybe accessing the LMS, or maybe your milestones haven't been graded, or maybe you submitted an assignment or a project and it's not reflecting all those issues or even issues with the application process, especially for you guys when you're making payment. If you experience issues with the application process, this is where we direct all, all our um, all the requests to. So actually, if you are able to, you can just copy paste that link and bookmark it somewhere. For one, like whether you're in the application process or when you start the program, at some point you will need this link. So if you can take advantage and sort of bookmark it as early as now, then you can just use it. And, you know, we normally like suggest that you know, when you're submitting a ticket, put actual screenshots of the issue. So maybe you're experiencing like a certain error or whatever it is, just, um, uh, you know, put screenshots and they will be able to assist you. So, yes, we don't have a number. We don't have, uh, you know, a number that you can call. The customer support team is there to support you in the entire process um yeah um let me see um i think most of the questions have been answered in terms of how the program is offered whether they can do two programs at the same time um i think there's a question around payment but i've lost it so at the point where you're making payments uh, it will show you two options uh, it will show you, uh, you know, once you get this communication, let me just. So, you know, once, you know, you finish your application, it says, congratulations, application has been successful. And then it gives you these three options. Let's say you click on the, you know, pay into installments or even like pay monthly. When you click on it, it will give you two options for pay with Flutterwave or pay with Stripe. So the M-Pesa option will be under pay with um, will be under pay with Flutterwave. So you'll just click on the Flutterwave option. You will see how to pay with M-Pesa. It will give you like the conversion from USD to Kenya shillings, and then you can just put your number, uh, and then it will send the um, the prompt for you to put your pin. So you can pay with M-Pesa, and then for those guys who want to pay with card, you can also pay with card as well. But I know that most people have been making payments with M-Pesa. So just letting you know that M-Pesa option is actually available under the Flutter Whip option. So, you know, this is the page that it will show you. Click on the option that you're interested in. Uh, and as I mentioned, if you, let's say you choose monthly, you can't change to two installments afterwards. So that means you'll have to sort of proceed with that payment option. And for those guys for monthly and two installments, um, at some point, like when, when let's say the next installment is due, you will actually get a notification on email to go ahead and make your payments. Yeah. But all, also all that will also be communicated in your onboarding week once you start the program. Um, yeah. Um, there's a question for... Uh, what are the additional costs for fellowship? There are no additional costs for ALX fellowship. So ALX fellowship is uh, is open to everyone as long as you've graduated from the from ALX. 
and there are no additional costs for accessing like the benefits of ALX fellowship at all, at all, at all. So it's not like another program that you need to pay for. All that comes as you know part of the package of you doing what the program that you're choosing right now. Um, then there's a question that has just come in. I've just finished the SC program and I'm 35 years. Will I be able to enroll for another ELX program? Uh, tricks, tricks, tricks. Obam. <laughs> uh, Nabil, Nabil, that's his name. Nabil, so our programs are, um, we have a, a mandate with MasterCAD. So the mandate is that we try, we, we train uh, African youth who are between the ages of 18 and 34. So wow, this will be a tough one for you. Mm, yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah, that's just how it is. Um, all right, thanks, Obam. And then there's a question from Kefas in terms of, can you clarify about the issue of sponsorship? So um, I mentioned in the application process um, that, you know, there's a sponsorship essay question. So there are normally two costs, right? There's the administration fees, and then there's the program fees. What has been waived or what you're getting sponsorship for is the program fees and not the administration fees. So that means that everyone who registers for our tech programs will have to pay the administration fees. And you know these are the amounts I mentioned. Our program fees, are when you actually value our courses, they actually range between $7,500 to like $10,000. And so that is what you know is being sponsored by MasterCard Foundation. The only thing that you'll need to pay is the administration fee. So basically here in the application process, this sponsorship is a question. You're basically explaining why, you, why the program fees should be covered for you. And you know, like that $7,500 or that $10,000, why should it be covered for you? And then you will still pay the administration fee. So I hope that's clear. You are paying the administration fee, all of you are paying the administration fee. The sponsorship question is basically to explain, you know, why do you want this opportunity where, you know, MasterCard Foundation gets to, you know, cover the rest of your program fees. But yes, everyone pays the administration fee. So the sponsorship question doesn't mean that the uh, admin fee is waived. No, it's only the program fees. What you're paying for is the administration fees. Yeah. Um, I think we have most questions. I don't know that there's anyone who feels like their question hasn't been answered. Um, just retype it in the chat like if you feel like a question hasn't been answered because i've been trying to scroll through through and um i think most questions have been answered um this are the administration fees jacob so there's a question from jacob how much is the administration fees um it was on screen so for aws it's 150 dollars for front end and back end it's 200 dollars Salesforce, it's $175. Uh, data analytics, it's $150. And then these are the payment options where you can choose to pay uh, you know, the full amount um, and get a 20% discount, or you can pay um, you know, in two installments, um, you know, half as you start and half after two months, or you can choose to make the amount monthly. Um, Obama, maybe you can answer this next question where someone is saying, if I apply for the front end development, which exam body should I sit on for? Yeah. Um, ideally, there is no exam body per se that, uh, you know, uh, this is KCP or NEC or whatever, in case that is the exam body that you're talking about. In fact, there is somebody else who asked a question. I saw it on the chat. I wanted to comment a little bit about it also. You are asking that uh, how long is the validity of the certificate and after that length of period, does it become useless? But the answer to that question is very simple. When what we, our core business at ALX is making sure that you get the skills, not the certificate. 
the certificate you get to you know just indicate that uh no mercy the certificate doesn't have an expiry date i just saw somebody commenting on the chat and i thought maybe it's good to clarify that but also to clarify the fact that what is important is the skills that you're going to acquire during the program um it's not like campus where you know if some people who you know, don't show up for lectures, don't do nothing. But then when the exam comes, they know that I'm going to copy from ABCD. I'm going to use chat GPT. That's not the kind of learner we are looking for when you when you guys are, you know, coming to ALX. You won't, that's not somebody who will fit, somebody who doesn't uh, possess integrity. So, yeah, John, once you have done the front-end uh, development uh, program, you will get a certificate from ALX, there is no exam body or an external exam body that is going to examine you. Remember for front end, just the same way as for back end and for data analytics, for you, it is very, very, very important that you actually do those tests, get at least 75% every week, submit all those milestones because all that will account to your final grade, all, all of it. Like every single test that you do, every single milestone that you do will account to you for your final grade. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Richard. Yeah, and maybe also just to add, Obam, that for front end and back end, guys, you get to do the capstone project at the end of the program that shows, you know, like it will test all the skills that you have been learning in the program. So that capstone project is also like graded um as long as we, you know with the other milestones and tests that, that you do on a weekly basis so front end and back end guys you need to know that you know expect the capstone project it's actually quite intensive but you know one of the most amazing things that we've seen with like you know guys who've been doing like their capstone projects is some of them decide to create a business out of it where they are like i've already been working on this solution to solve a certain problem uh, let me join, like, you know, we have ALX Ventures, which is, you know, our entrepreneurship side for just helping you learn how to start uh, your business or build like a prototype and things like that. So there are some people who do their capstone projects and they're like, you know what, um, I think I would want to test this out as a business, as, you know, providing this solution. Um, and um, you never know what it could be for you. So, yeah, that's it. Um, Oba, maybe you can just take this next question where I think maybe Baraka might have missed, you know, how the learning um, is done. So maybe you can just summarize it. Yeah. So the, concerning the lessons, are there real-time video conferences that require a set of time? Okay, great. That's a good question. All the resources that you require will be at your disposal on the learning platform. That means that even for the office hours, which are normally real time, that means that you, in case there's a technical mentor, they're, they're asking, they're answering questions, it's normally real time. But don't worry, they will be recorded and the recording sent to you. So in case you missed because I don't know, you were stuck at work or you didn't get a bit of time, you are encouraged as much as possible to join because you get a chance to also ask your question in real time. But I mean, if you're not able to, because one or the other reason, the recording is uh, normally sent to your email, which is also on the learning platform. But the, more or less, you have access to the resources 24 seven on the learning platform. Um, all right, thank you for that. And I think a follow up question from Samuel is, are there compulsory physical classes? No, you learn through the learning management system. The only things that we do in person are, you know, we often do like some in-person events that are not compulsory. So you can just choose to attend them or not, you know, like we normally have um, data Mondays where all the students in the, who are doing data programs come together. Um, we have, I think, AWS Wednesdays, uh, Salesforce, I think on Thursday, they meet on Thursday. Guys are doing now front and back end. Uh, there's also Thursday as well, Software Engineering Thursday for guys who are doing front end and back end. All those like in-person events are not compulsory. Um, and as I mentioned, some of the events will be online, some of them will be in person. 
not compulsory at all. They're just things to support you as a student, but their main work is on the learning management system. Um, yeah, there's a question from Dave. For front end and back end, does the commitment fee cover both programs? No. Uh, front end is 200, back end is 200. So let's say if you decide to start with back end, then later on you do front end, you will pay individually. So that means it's 400, right? So that each program, the 200 is for each individual program and not both of them. So if you decide you'll start with either of the program, you'll pay the 200. Later on, if you decide, you know what, you know, I also want to learn back end as well or learn front end, depending on the one that you started with, you will need to pay the commitment fee again. Um, um, is it allowed to enroll for the AI Career Essentials program while enroll to data analytics? No. Um, I'll say finish one program and then do the other. We, we will actually have seven AI Career Essentials cohorts throughout the year. Right now we're in cohort three. Right now we are doing the intake for cohort three. So we will have four more cohorts throughout the year. I would encourage you finish data analytics first so that now when you start doing AI Career Essentials, you, you are really able like to commit the time and effort. As I mentioned, like a lot of students, I mean, it's written there 20 to 30 hours a week, but AI Career Essentials is actually leaning more towards the 30 hours. So now that combined with like the 30 to 40 hours a week for data analytics, you would essentially be doing 70 hours a week. And, you know, we've kind of like tested that with the software engineering program where we are running it for 70 hours a week and it was like really intense for our students. So. That's why we can we don't recommend you to do both programs. Um, Obam, there's someone asking about how people get to access the hubs. Okay, great, Caleb. So first of all, we have three hubs in Nairobi, Nation Center at CPA Center and uh, at Gateway Park on Mombasa Road. To access the hub once you have uh, been accepted into the program, that means that uh, once you have been enrolled into the program, that means that you pay the commitment fee and you know you're ready to actually start running your career ceremony. We are going to send you a link, a link which is a, a ticketing link. So to access the hub, what you need is a ticket. You book the ticket, then you get the ticket sent to your email address, and then you use that ticket to go to the hub. You'll find the security guard there. And he'll scan the ticket to you to allow you access. It's a very, very simple process. Once you have the link, you know, it just asks you a few questions, which is, you know, your name, the program you're doing, and uh, your email address so that it can, you know, because the email is actually sent to your email address. The, the link, the, the ticket is sent to your email address. Yep, and with just with, just like that, you're able to come to the hub every single day, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. That's the time our hubs are open. For CPA Center and Gateway Park, you know, we don't have really uh, time slots. You can just come in at any time. For National Center, sometimes it gets really packed because it's very central. So you can even take the morning shift, the afternoon shift, or, you know, Days in which people are not so many, you can actually do to both. I mean, you can come in the morning, stay throughout the day. But yeah, and then apart from that, uh, for those who are gonna stay longer, the hub, uh, we have, you know, somewhere you can put your food if you carry food in you know, the fridge. And then at lunch hour, you get to warm it in the microwave so that, you know, you can actually get to study the better part of the day. I know a couple of people who do that. They work Monday to Friday, and then on Saturday they spend the whole day at the hub, you know, just finishing everything that they they, they had left pending. But yeah, that's how you access the hubs. Um, all right, thank you, Obama. Um, then we'll go to the last last question from Stephen um, to just highlight the idea of the fellowship. Um, so fellowship is like a community of graduates where it's like a community of graduates where you get to interact with each other, learn from each other, continue supporting each other and working with each other along your journey. Um, you know, you get to access, you become an ALX fellow once you graduate from your program. So you have to have graduated from your program. Um, and then some of the benefits include, you know, additional like master classes, workshops, 
in person and online events, all of them they're not paid for, all those things are geared towards just helping you in your journey as you grow in your career and as you progress. So that's basically what fellowship really means. And you know, we'll, you will get to connect, um, you know, from online events, you'll get to connect with, you know, fellows from other countries as well. Uh, you know, and even like for the in-person ones, um, you'll get to connect with also fellows from the other programs as well. So yeah, that's the idea of fellowship. But, you know, fellowship is meant to just be, uh, you know, lifelong um, community. So yeah, we are coming to the end. Uh, I can see we are, uh, we only have one minute left. Um, Obam, as the person who will be taking care of, you know, these learners when they start the program, are there any last words that you want to share with them? Oh gosh, man, I wish I had last words. I hate last words, but the only thing I wanna tell them is this, that joining, most probably you've had a lot of things about ALX, but I would advise that you come and see for yourself more than hearsay. Anyway, as usual, good things have to always come to an end. Like this webinar was a good thing. It has to come to an end. But I always tell my learners, we don't do good things with ELX. We, I mean, the things we do are good, but we try and advise them to do hard things. So I want to love and leave you tonight, but as you go forward, please go and do hard things. Thanks a lot. Um, fantastic. Thank you, Obam. So yes, um, to you all, join our community of people who do hard things. By the time you leave ALX, you'll have a very different mindset in terms of how you do, you know, how you approach even just life. There's a testimonial that you've just uploaded and that student was saying that, you know, ALX not only helps you become a pro better professional, but also just become a better person generally. And, you know, you will get to interact with such a vibrant, vibrant community of amazing people who are doing hard things. Uh, you'll get to make like a lot of friends who are like-minded people. Emphasis on like-minded friends, people who are keen on, you know, doing amazing things in life, solving problems and things like that. So we encourage you all to join and we look forward to seeing you in the program. For everyone who's joined late, um, as long as you registered for this webinar, you will get a, the recording delivered directly to your email. Once we finish, you will see an email from StreamYard with the recording uh, for this session. And then the recording will also be available on YouTube and Twitter at ALX Kenya because we are already streaming live. Once we end, it will be automatically posted on our ALX Kenya uh, Twitter and YouTube channel. And on the YouTube channel, when you go to the live section, there are actually even just much more uh, detailed um, webinars. So we've done a webinar there on careers in data analytics and data science. We've done a webinar on AWS, on Salesforce, on the difference between front end and back end to like now the technical aspect of it, where you know on all those webinars, we had some of our technical mentors who joined in and elaborated on it. So go to the ALX Kenya YouTube page, um and then just check i'm actually just going to show you like those webinars so that you know exactly um you know where to check um because they are quite a resource especially because you know maybe you are thinking about you know doing this as a you know like you're thinking about this you know as a career so you know maybe you want to be able to think through more so i'll just share my screen briefly so uh before we end um, but yeah, so when you go to the ALX Kenya YouTube channel, this is, you know, you'll come here to the live section and you'll be able to see all the webinars that we have done. Um, so you will see um, there's a webinar that we did. So um, there's one here on AI Masterclass, Careers in Data Analytics and Data Science, the difference between front end and back end. This was very technical, like, you know, the technical mentors were talking about all the programming languages and whatnot. I was literally floating the entire time, but you'll get so much value from it. There's one here about Salesforce Administrator, one here about AWS, where we also had a technical mentor who came and really explained the, like, the different sides of the AWS ecosystem and what you are getting into. So yeah, head on there, listen to them, and there are also just other webinars as well that you can get to benefit from. And yeah, connect with us 
on our social media channels at ALX Kenya everywhere. So thank you, thank you so much everyone for joining today. It was a pleasure interacting with you, answering your questions. Obam, thank you so much for joining and just taking your time to answer the questions from our participants. We are so grateful for you taking the time. Lillian and Diana, thank you so much as well for just helping moderate the chat and answer people's questions. Um, yeah, thank you everyone. We are looking forward to having you um, in the ALX program. Bye everyone and have a good night. Thank you.